Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is Surface by Qubit Electronics. So, Qubit Electronics described the Surface as a multi timbral physical modeling voice, uh, which to me means okay, well, that apparently means that they do a lot of calculations actually trying to replicate how physical instruments, well, the real acoustic instruments, how those behave under very specific uh, physical conditions. Um, so that's one of the things that are really interesting to me is, of course, okay, well, how do they do that? And how do we then make sure that we can use those sounds as well? So I have had one slight challenge with this model, and that was that the actual sound level was quite low. So I've been in contact with the tech support team over at Qubit, and big kudos to them. And the one way to fix it was to actually upgrade the firmware that's on this model, uh, which is firmware version 1.2.0, uh, to upgrade that to 1.2.4. So the first part of this video is going to be exactly that. Just me trying, or at least, well, <laughs> I'm going to do my best, let's just say, let's just keep it at that, of upgrading this to uh, 1.2.4, and then later on I'm going to do my regular overview demo, and then a big, bit of a jam on the surface. Um, so I hope you guys are uh, going to enjoy this. If, you, if you're not interested in the actual upgrade itself, uh, just use the, you know, the timestamps below to just skip to the, uh, well, the things that you are interested in. So I would say uh, sit down, enjoy, grab something to drink, because uh, here we go. So here we've got the Surface by Qubit Electronics. Um, as mentioned, the first thing I'm going to do is actually uh, show you how I want to upgrade this. So I haven't done this yet. This is currently running uh, firmware version 121, if I'm not mistaken. So if you want, you can actually see the, um, the firmware version. So if you do connect this to power, let me just do that right now. Red line minus 12. There you go. Let me just uh, switch on the power supply here. There you go. So you see it's blue, green, and that's it. So if I then go to the table that's included in the manual, you would actually see, so it was blue, which means one, and then two, and off is zero. So this is indeed firmware version 1.2.0. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upgrade this to version 1.2.4. So let's uh, turn this off again. There you go. So what we then see is that we've got the so-called DAISY web programmer. And what you're then going to need is you're going to need a micro USB cable. There you go. And you connect that to the DAISY platform. So I always need to make sure I connect this the right way. Hopefully this is going to work the first time around. There you go. And as you see, this is now enough to power the actual module. So we don't need to power it on anyway. So once we want to actually connect to this, so we need to make sure that it's connected to the computer and to the system bootload by holding the boot button down and then pressing and releasing the reset button. There you go. Holding the boot. So here you've got boot and reset. So I need to hold boot and then reset. There you go. I've already heard that my machine is now restarting. And once that's done, I should be able to just click connect. And then we say that uh, DFU in FS mode paired. I've got a lot of USB devices, apologies for that. There you go. What we then do is we go and grab the file that I got from the well the really friendly people over at Qubit uh, technical support so this is the fir the surface firmware version 1.2.4 double click that that's now loaded and click program Ooh. so it's been erased it's now being copied 
And then hopefully it rotates. Okay. And it's done. So now, if I just click reset, we should be able to see blue, green, and red, or well, purple. So that is indeed firmware version one two four. So this was uh, <laughs> actually this was step one of today's video. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to re well reassemble this into my case and I'm going to run you through the actual part of this video and that is actually showing you what the surface can do. I'll be right back. So now we've got the uh, surface nice and uh, mounted again. Um, so if we now start it up again, it'll hopefully show the blue, green and purple again. There you go. Blue, green, purple. So still, the uh, the new firmware seems to be uh, holding, which is absolutely fantastic. So the main reason why I wanted to actually upgrade the firmware is that in my uh, experience, the previous uh, firmware version uh, led to well a quite low volume coming out of the actual module itself. Um, so that's the reason why I wanted to do this. And you can now experience live if that was indeed well, <laughs> fixed by this. So without further ado, let me just connect everything here. Oh, apologies for that. Here we go, three, two, one. Oh, that was quite painless, you might say. So let's get started. So let's start with the just the left output. And I've got everything else like that. There you go. That's quite nice. Let's show that, lower that decay. That's beautiful. Wow, beautiful. So before we actually dive into the actual module and how it sounds, let's uh, go over the actual uh, user interface. So we have several buttons right there. So this is the, uh, the the trigger. So that's also the same as the trigger in the CV1 that actually well, um, triggers the sound that you want. You can do choke, which actually says, well, if you've got a long decay, just stop that immediately. That's choke. And you've got your number of voices that you want to have at this ver very same time. So again, the num well, this will then correlate to, well, the actual number of voices that you have. And then I always need to have a cheat sheet here for me. So hold on for just one moment. <laughs> uh, let's see. So it's always the, this, this is all nice, 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 nice. Voices, where are you? There you go. So if you've got blue, that's one. So you only have one voice. So as you can hear, there is no. But if you then go to Cyan, you've got. Or you can go to green, that's four. Or you can have eight, which is of course quite quite nice, right? So awesome. So then you've got your well, your actually frequency setting. So uh, coarse and fine. Uh, you've got the other well really specific functionality right here. So you've got your strike, which is going to influence the actual attack behavior. So if I, I'm just going to use this first one just to, to show. Them. You hear that difference there? Then you've got tone, which is essentially a bit of what, what kind of varieties you've got. Beautiful, right? And this is also then related, of course, to the specific models that we've got. And that is where um, the model setting comes in. Um, so even though this is a, well, a rotary <laughs> uh, encoder, you'll see 
by the flashes in the voices when we actually switch between them. So it's going to be pluck bell. So the first one was pluck bell. This is going to be the first variety of an electronic piano. Another electronic piano. And then you've got your kick. You can do so many beautiful things with that. Now you've got the snare. There you go. You might want to play with that a bit. There you go. And you've got the so-called prepared piano. Beautiful, right? <laughs> I love it. And then of course you've got all these tone varieties and all these strike varieties for each and every of these models. And again, as I mentioned during the introduction, these are all physically emulated. So this is not, hey, we've got a couple of samples that we're just playing. No, this is actually doing the calculations for these instruments. So how do the actual instruments, how the, the, the physical uh, aspects and the, 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 the actual physical approach to it, how does that behave under certain conditions? And that's what we're looking in here for. So a couple of other things, of course, you have CV control over all of these. Um, most interesting, of course, is of course the trig, the choke and the full proctive, but you can also just influence the strike so that, that that attack behavior, the actual model selection. So if you want to do uh, dynamic model switching, you can do that. Um, you've got your setting for your decay. So if you want to have dynamic decay and you've got control over the tone. So if you want to have a truly, uh, let's say evolving sound, you can do that. And then as a coup de gras, so to say, we actually have stereo out which will behave uh, differently for left and right and that of course then also depends on what kind of model you have and show you what that ha what that does so this is the left one for this one if we then connect to the right one beautiful right so how does that then behave if you do give it something that it can work with let's uh grab the pam's new workout let's uh reset that for now let's just give that a bit of a clock there let's go into hermit let's grab the hermit make sure that that's playing as well well we might want to uh, up the bpm it's currently at 45 which is uh, quite low especially for my standards and i'm just gonna open it up to 120 and let's just connect this, right? Let's see how we can do this. So I'm gonna get the full proactive, there you go. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the trigger. And you'll immediately recognize the melody, of course. Um, yeah, this is trig. So what you can now do is if you can, of course, make sure that you have something like a, a random choke happening. So I'm just gonna grab something from Pam's new workout. So I'm just gonna go here and make sure that we have something that occasionally just skips this. And we then use that to do the choke.
It's quite nice, right? But if we then also patch something with a bit of CV into the, let's say, the, the, the model. then like to do is I, I actually just want to grab two uh, random values so I want to have this one and I'm just going to create and I'm using the Pam's new workout for this so random use that to drive the strike behavior grab the same thing or something similar I don't want to use the exact same uh, one I just want to make sure that we have well some random values that we can work with do the same for tone to have a very slow LFO on my decay. So let's just add a bit more sound to it and make sure that this is indeed something that we can keep listening to.
this is actually something you can dance to. Wow. I'm even... <laughs> I've, I've impressed myself. to add a bit of reverb to this so we already have a nice decay happening which well it just keeps on giving right so let me just grab some cables so I've got the Vino echo uh, lined up right here and I still need to do a full video on it so no worries I hope you enjoyed my cameo on uh, Casper and Lily's video on the Vino Echo. So let's just uh, grab the clock in. Ooh, this is going to be nice. So apologies, I'm just going to disconnect this. There we go. And I'm just going to connect it to this one here. Apologies again. And let's just grab this output and just put that into right here. And we'll see what we're going to have. Ooh. One of the nice things with the Vino Echo is, of course, that reverse that is so rich. Ooh, this is pumping. I love it. So again, that being said, I love this. I would say let's go back to the studio and wrap this up, shall we? Cheers. So I truly hope you enjoyed my video on the Surface by Qubit Electronics. I've had a lot of fun uh, making this video. Uh, on the one hand, that is because I, I was quite happy that the first time I tried, I was able to upgrade the firmware on this. And a lot has to be said for the flexibility of the DAISY platform, of course, uh, which, is a, which is a platform that we've seen used in other modules as well. Uh, so again, this is a big win for the DAISY platform, uh, but also for the Qubit team, uh, making sure that it's that easy to upgrade firmware, uh, which is almost, well, you, well, you can probably do it wrong, but um, yeah, it's, it's quite idiot proof, you might, you might say. So then over to the model itself. 
I think that this is one of the richest sounding modules out there. And as you've got CV control over everything, this is something you can truly play with. And even though I'm not the biggest artist there is when it comes to um, automating these sort of modules, even I've been able to, with just Pam's new workout and the Hermit, I've been able to do, well, quite some interesting things with this already. So in the hands of a true artist, uh, this thing will actually shine and blow you away. So that being said, I hope that everyone enjoyed this. Um, I do want to uh, thank again, well, everyone who's been supporting me over the course of the last year or so uh, with this uh, with this channel. If you do want to get involved, if you do want to uh, uh, support this channel going forward, as always, the easiest way is to use any of the affiliate links down below. Uh, you can also join our Patreon, or you can, of course, buy me a coffee. And if there are other ways where how you want to uh, support me in this endeavor, uh, just reach out. If you've got any questions, any comments, any feedback, um, drop me a line at Jesper at the modular clubhouse.nl or just leave them in the comments down below. And well, for now, we'll just say, please everyone, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, make sure that we uh, try to make this, uh, this world of ours a better place. And um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. See you for my next video. Thanks again. Cheers. Thank you.